Welcome to uh, the video help guide for section 3. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, this one is titled Ensuring that data is suitable for processing. You have to basically look at and explore the many methods that can be used to ensure data that has been inputted is suitable and within boundaries so that it's ready to be processed. You have to then explain with examples the following validation methods, so those there, and the following verification methods, which are these two here. So let's go through each of these points because there's a, there's a couple of things here, well, there's quite a few words here that you may not be familiar with, that you may have never seen before. So you start off with an in, uh, introduction, talk about how it's important that data has to be um, collected accurately. And to do that, we need a number of different verification and validation methods. Things that you, as a person collecting the data, can place or put in to make sure that certain mistakes don't get made. So for example, actually, before going to the examples, let's talk about what these two words mean. So validation and verification. Now validation involves testing uh, that the input data conforms to certain rules. So you have a set, certain set of rules and it matches those rules. And again, this will make sense when I talk about the examples. Then you have verification. Verification involves entering data more than once to ensure that the entries are the same. Now verification is actually easier when you think about it. If you were to sign up to something that might be quite important to you, let's talk about Facebook as an example, or setting up your email for the first time, or something on those lines, something that needs a security measure in place. For example, something that requires you to put a password in. Now when you do that for the first time, ask yourself, how many times did it ask you to type the password, your chosen password, in before they let you log in for the first time? It's usually twice, right? And there's a reason for that. And the reason is actually more obvious than it seems. And it's to make sure that you didn't make a mistake when you typed it in the first time. Imagine if you were setting up your account on Facebook for the first time, something that you're going to use for many, many years, as most people do, or something else like your email. And it only asked you to write your password, choose your password and type it in once. You could have easily slipped the finger on the keyboard and you know, typed another character by accident without knowing it. It lets you log on and then you log off once you're done with the session, you come back in the next day and you can't log on because your password doesn't match. This is why they ask you to type in the password twice. Every time you change your password, it asks you to type it in twice because it's highly, highly unlikely that you will make the same mistake twice. So when you type in the password once and then you type it in the second time, if they, those two passwords that you typed in, even though that you know you might be thinking, why is it asking me to do it twice? If they don't match, they know you've made a mistake and therefore it would then prompt you to check that the password is correct. That way you minimize the risk of you know, being locked out from your account as you don't remember your password. So that's what verification is. Validation is to make sure that the data collected makes sense for the context. Okay, so let's go for some of these for the, uh, some of these examples. To, before we go any further, though, page seventy six and seventy seven, as a reminder, are the pages and the books uh, that uh, that will help you with this section. As I said, you need to go through each one of these and explain what they are, how they use, with examples, and why they are there. On page seventy six, there's a very very useful table that t talks about every single one of these. And again, you can't just copy and paste it. It has to be in your own words, um, otherwise you will fail. Fail uh, the entire course, that is, because if there's any kind of plagiarism, um, there's no um, mercy on that, unfortunately. There's no tolerance to that. You have to make sure it's that that is it's your, it's your own work. So please, please, please don't make the mistake. So let's go through each one. Um, range check. Range check, ladies and gentlemen, is to make sure that the data that someone types in um, whether it's a survey or a form, whatever it might be, um, whatever method been, is being adopted to collect this information in the first place, that the, the range makes sense. For example, if you're asking for someone's date of birth or the date they're filling it in or the date they plan to start a trip or a, a job, the month, for example, will never be more than 12. Yeah, it'll be between 1 and 12. You've got January to December. Now, if you didn't have a range check to say between 1 and 12 for the month, 
and then someone could accidentally put 15 down and it wouldn't make any sense. So someone types in their date of birth, which is quite an important inf bit of information that a company might need, especially if you plan to work for someone, and the person types in 13, which is a month that doesn't exist. Yeah. Another example, the day of the month Yeah, will always be between 1 and 31 because there's no month that's more than 31 days. Yeah, Letters um, should be between A and F, for example. Um, as an example, sorry, uh, it, depending on what kind of organization it is. So, again, range is when you give a certain a, a, a rule. Remember, these are all rules, basically. In essence, these are all rules. This rule, the first one, range, is the rule of the range, the information, the data, sorry, that's been entered has to come in between. Has to come in between either X and Y, one and an, another number, whatever. Yeah. Now I'm, I am going to show you some examples. In fact, let's do that now. I've got this random job application form, online form that I found through House of Fraser. So, for example, here, um, date of birth. Here you go. Okay. Now, in most cases, they give you a calendar, so you can't make that mistake you, unless you click in. You know, click the wrong day. Uh, but because I've done, you know, they've they've given the provider the calendar, you can't really type in uh, the month thirteen. Yeah, so for example, let's just pretend. Uh, I'm going to click here to get the date, the year, sorry. So I'm going to go, sorry, let's go back this way. I'm going to pick a random year. Let's choose 1994, even though actually I'm not, it's not really my year of birth, but, you know, just randomly put one there. And let's put December uh, the 28th. Okay, done. Now, if you look here, you'll see it says 28, 12, 1994. Now, if this was a website that required me to type it in, it would have been more likely that I type, uh, that, that you know, there's a chance that I could make a mistake and type 13 in, or put 35 instead of uh, a date that actually makes sense. So this in itself is a, a, another form of validation. It's making sure that the person typing in here uh, cannot make a mistake, that it actually makes sense. So that is a range check. Um, I'm just wondering if there's another type of range check. No, that's that's pretty much the main ones that that you'll come across. Let's talk about the next one, type check. So type check is used to ensure that the right type of data is being used. The most common data types are text, numeric, and date. Uh, so for example, if I go back to this form, when it's asking for my name, sorry, let's go back here, name, it wouldn't make sense to put that that's not our name yeah so and there you go instantly so you can clearly see this has got a validation check here yeah it's making sure that what i've typed in there actually makes sense it's asking for a name why am i putting 76485 yeah so this is a, uh, a a perfect example of a type check so this is a name so therefore it's expecting a name now unfortunately you can't tell if i'm making a name up so as you may or may not know my name is mr ali right so if i put ali here uh, even though that's actually my surname, let's just put it down for now. It's not going to come up with that error message anymore. But I could put Ali like this, and it won't know the spelling mistake. Yeah, so it won't know spelling mistakes, unfortunately. But it can tell if I'm putting the correct type of data. Um, I couldn't lie and put my name's Tom, and again, it won't know that. So this check. Yeah, type check is only to check check whether I've typed in text when I need to type in text for the information that they require. Um, number when I need to type in number when the information is required. So, for example, if I put home number and I put down Tom here, it should. There you go. So, that's a type check. It knows that it should be a number. I've typed in some letters, so therefore it's telling me, nope, this isn't a valid phone number. So, there you go. So, those are some example type checks um, lookup check now lookup checks uh, in some cases the input data must be from a list of valid inputs that is provided so basically it looks it up so go back here you may have noticed early on uh, I deleted that yes I have right here we go it gives me a list okay so I have to pick one from here so that is a lookup so basically if I don't click something from here I can't go further. It must be one of these options. So basically a drop-down menu or a tick box. 
presence check. Now this is uh, one you will have come across if you use internet and signed up for anything ever in your life. A presence check well, let's talk about the word presence first. Presence means presence, meaning something that is there. Um, so basically, it's checking if it's there. And you may have noticed sometimes there is a star in certain fields when you fill in a form online. So you can see there's a star there, there's a star there, star here, star here, star here, star there, star there for the email. Verify email, look at that. We're going to talk about that later. Date of birth and then down here as well. Now, the reason for the stars is to make sure that there is something there. Now, look at this. I've left that blank and went to another one and it's saying here that this field is required, meaning it's empty. It knows that there's nothing present, hence a presence check. Something is missing. Please put something in. That's what it's doing. So it's got a number of different checks. And this is the thing, boys and girls. Don't think that you can't have more than one of these at the same time. You can have all of them. So in here, you can see there's a presence check. There's also a type check. It knows that it needs to be in the, uh, the answer here is it needs to be in the form of text letters and that it needs to be filled in. It can't be left empty. So if I typed in T and T here, oh, there's something else now. It knows it needs to be more than one letter, right? So this is basically a length check which is the next one, which we'll talk about in a second. There's a few other types as well, but we'll talk about in a second. So let's change this to Tom and put Tom. And again, the error message has come up and therefore we know that the present checks has been, has been uh, you know, covered and it works. Now this is again really useful, especially if you are looking for someone to work for you. You need to know what to call them. You need to know where they're coming from. Imagine if someone accidentally doesn't put in their address, then how would you know how to, you know, who could you reply to? How, you know, do you send a letter? If they've forgotten to type in their telephone number, how would you reply to them? Or email, how would you come back to them and say, look, we've got, we'd like you to come in for an interview. So you, as a person making, you know, this data collection form, can assign certain checks and make sure that the person filling it in minimizes the mistakes that they could potentially make okay so that there is your presence check the last one for the validation checks is length check now length is is, is, is simply as it as it is it's basically checking that the length makes sense so someone has obviously obviously thought about this uh, form very carefully when they designed it and they knew that basically it shouldn't have it should have more than one letter so as you can see there you go one letter but it seems like they will accept two so that's got a that's got a length check, and the length check is the length check here is that it must have more than two letters. Length check can also be applied to phone numbers. Now, most cases in this country, in the UK at least, it has to have 11, 11 digits. Yeah. Now let's see if they've actually got this down here. So I'm going to put down one, two, three, four, five, six. There you go. Okay. It seems to have a length check, but it's not 11. So if I go back here, and let's see where it stops. There you go. So basically, their length check here is more than three. Although to me that doesn't make any sense, but I might be wrong. There might be a reason behind that. But there you go. Personally, I would have had a length check of at least 11. 11 digits, otherwise it doesn't count. So that's the reason why you have a, le uh, a length check. So those are the main uh, types of validation uh, checks. Hopefully that makes sense with the examples that I've just provided you. As I said, there is a very useful table on page 76, so please take a look at that should you get lost. Let's look at verification before we end this video. Now, verification is pretty simple. There's only two things you need to talk about. And again, remember, you're talking about pros and cons for each one of these, and you want to explain how they all uh, can be used um, in conjunction with each other so you can use multiple versions of these checks uh, more than one basically to help you make sure that the person filling in the in the, the, the form uh, minimizes the mistakes that they make now verification as I said is all about making sure that uh, data is uh, entered um, as accurately as possible so you've got proofreading methods and you've got double entry methods okay um, Proofreading. So let's have a read through page 77. Hopefully you have it in front of you. Unlike validation, which checks the input against certain rules, verification ensures that the input is checked more than once. So basically you're asking them more than once. 
A common example of this is when entering new pa a new password. You're usually asked to enter a new password twice. The two entries you make are compared to, ins compared to ensure that they are the same. This helps uh, prevent typing errors that would create a password that could not be used uh, um, could not be used. Remember, when typing a password, they're usually uh, starred out, so you can't see any errors. Another example of uh, double entry uh, verification is a stock take in a warehouse where stock amounts are entered twice, passed by two different people. However, this method does not guarantee all mistakes are avoided, obviously, because you could see that they both made a mistake. Yeah. So imagine if you're working at Tesco and the manager wants to know how many boxes of cereal they have in the back, you're asked to go and count it. You could make a mistake, so they ask someone else to do it at the same time, and then they compare the numbers. Now, that doesn't help eradicate the mistake, because there's still a chance that both people make the mistakes, but it still minimizes it. Another form of verification is proofreading. This is normally used in a slightly different situation in that it is used to check documents such as reports for spelling, grammar uh, errors rather than by checking input data before processing. Now, the, nevertheless, it's, important, it's an important technique for reducing errors in, a document, uh, in, in documentary information. It is easy to make mistakes when typing text, so proofreading involves reading what you have written again, again to check for any errors. However, proofreading reading is no guarantee that errors are removed. Often we read what the text should say, not what it actually says. Also, proofreading your own work is hard because you tend to read what you meant to say and miss subtle errors, such as typing form rather than from. Now, the easiest form of proofreading is I found in a lot of websites, if you ever apply for something, something important like a credit card, for example, is you might be asked to fill in something like this. And then once you filled it, you press next or continue. On the next page, it basically shows a copy of everything you've typed in um, as, as you've typed it. And then it actually says at the top, please check that the information below is correct. And if not, press back to edit what you need to edit. And in some cases, they may even have like an edit button next to each field, saving you the hassle of having to go back and do everything and just change those individual fields should you need to. So proofreading and double entries are two ways of just double checking something's been done. Sometimes it's done, well, most cases it's done by the person who's typing in the data in the first place. Okay, hope that makes sense. Please explain each one, use examples, talk about pros and cons. Good luck.